Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and uh, this is a short video to answer a few questions from Matthew Knight. Somebody sent me a message asking some questions. Uh, Matthew Knight, I will answer your questions. But before I answer your questions, I have a couple quick announcements to make, which I'm hijacking the first minute or so of this to make. Just because I haven't put out a lot of videos recently and people are like, where are Tom's videos? I'm really bored and, and want to watch Tom's videos. So quick announcements, then on to the Matthew Knight questions. Uh, let me cover up the um, cover up the serial number here with my finger. I have my new Polymaster right here. This is not my old Polymaster. This is a new Polymaster. You see, this is a PM1703 GNB. Now, what that is is a spectroscopic uh, um, uh, detector. This thing is capable of doing gamma spectrums. It can take a gamma spectrum, so I can determine uh, if something that's radioactive is well, like cesium-137 versus europium-152 versus uranium. I can actually tell the difference between them with this. This thing can give me an x, y, x by y graph. Um, here, let me show you what one looks like. That lets you then figure out what stuff is. Do you, do you see what I mean? Um, but better than being able to do that kind of thing, which you can definitely do, this guy has a neutron detector built into it. A neutron detector. Yes, a neutron detector. So anyway, that means that this thing's capable of detecting neutron radiation. Specifically, um, it's a lithium-6 iodide europium doped detector. And to give you an idea how that works, using my um, device right here, I'm going to take this right here. And let me show you. Um, as you see the neutron count at the bottom, you can see me. Look, it's me. Like you can see me forever, hopefully, in that the reflection. No, maybe not. Well, do you see where I have point one one counts per second in neutrons? Well, I'm going to take this handy dandy piece of uranium, uranium, stick it on top of this detector, and we'll see if that goes up. So, without further ado, uh, point one one counts per second. We put the uranium on the detector. I'm going to hold it there because it wants to fall off. We'll see if, let me see if I can center that better. It's like, I'm having to do this backwards. Wow. Earlier it went up a little bit. It takes like a second or two to respond. My god, the gamma responds fast. The neutron detector takes actually a few seconds to respond. I was getting as much as five and six neutrons per second off of uh, some of my samples. So it depends. This guy's not doing too much right this second. I flip it over. Maybe it'll do a little bit better. Well, we'll let it sit there for a few seconds. Um, <clears throat> I also have, oops, where is it? Here it is. Also have the PolySmart I want to show folks too. PolySmart, which is a device for doing dosimetry. Yeah, see that it is a much, much better view of me. I like see me sit forever and ever and ever in the reflection. No, but anyway, so this poly smart right here, pointed. Oh God, having troubles here. Is a dosimeter that you can carry around with you that connects to your uh, uh, phone, like an iPhone or a Android. So there we go. It's gone up to. Just gave me the finger. Oops. It's gone up to 0.12 counts per second. So we have a little bit of neutrons off of this. Not too much. I've gotten a couple more. So I'm going to show all of these things to you guys in a short period of time. If we're right this second, let's get to the actual asked questions. The first question is, what kind of dose rates will you get off of one microcarry, that would be what this is, of cesium-137 uh, with a Geiger counter and other sorts of things? The answer is it really varies on the actual unit. And the reason is uh, a couple fold. Well, first off, uh, the detector has an efficiency. By the way, this is the end of the announcement, so like this is the end of the question parts now. So, the detector has an efficiency. It's one percent efficient, five percent efficient, hundred percent efficient, whatever the efficiency is. And if this produces ten gamma rays, for example, and this thing is twenty percent efficient, that means it would detect two of them. Make sense? The actual efficiencies are much less than that usually, and they vary between gammas, alphas, and betas. Now, um, two different Geiger counters that look very similar to one another have completely different detectors. This guy, for example, has the huge pancake detector, very uh, very efficient in some kinds of uh, 
uh, detections. This guy has a more gamma sensitive detector, the little tiny guy right here. All right. So I'll put those up in a second and show you what they actually look like. Scintillators, like um, um, uh, Matthew, you mentioned that you have a scintillator. Scintillators are pretty much always going to be about the best when it comes to um, detection of gamma rays, unless you're going to get into something like a high purity germanium detector, or a solid state detector like that. Okay, Geiger counters are not as sensitive. The reason Geiger counters are so awesome, and the reason that they continue to persist after all of these years and so many better things, is because they are inexpensive, robust, can detect a multitude of different particles, and they're easy to work with. No liquid, you know, helium or anything weird like that needed to make them function. That's one of the main reasons they're still here. Cheap, affordable, gets the job done. Works like a champ, right? All right, so uh, to go over season 137, let me show you uh, the graphic here. Okay, here's the graphic. Looking at this decay chart, you can see that cesium-137 is up at the top. It is a 30.1 year half-life, and it decays to stable barium-137 at the bottom. Any radioactive material that exists pretty much will decay like this from one thing into another. Some of them can even branch into multiple possible daughters. Like the cesium-137 only decays into barium-137. But um, other uh, uh, other uh, nucleides, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head that does this. Um, let me think. Uh, sodium-22, for example, decays into two different ones. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head. One of them is neon, and I can't remember. I think the other one's argon or something. But, uh, but regardless, cesium-137 decays 5.3% of the time straight to the ground state. So you're going to get a beta decay and nothing else. The other 94.7% of the time, you're also going to get a beta decay. So you're always going to get a beta decay with cesium-137, every time. One and only one beta per decay. But 94% of the time, it's going to end up in an excited state, um, what's called a metastable, a short-lived um, uh, excited state. 14.9% of this time, via electron capture, um, the barium-137 is going to drop to ground state, and you're not going to get a uh, gamma ray at all. So you get a beta, no gamma ray. The other 85.1% of the time, you're going to get a gamma ray. So you see, alpha and beta are the only two really major decay types. There are some other exotic ones. There's double beta decays and stuff like that. But generally speaking, beta and alpha are your two primary decay modes. They are ejections of matter and energy that result in a decay, that re re result in a change of the nucleus into a, a into a lighter. Uh, nucleus. You can go up or down the periodic table of elements depending on, on which way the isotope moves and everything, but the point of the matter is you're changing from one thing to another. It's nuclear transmutation of sorts. Um, the result of these decays can be an excited state that has to get rid of all that excited energy somehow, and it does this via the emission of a gamma ray and or x-rays. So your question about the activity, one microcarry, which is 37,000 disintegrations per second, and, how, and, and, and the number of uh, uh, betas versus gammas, well, the number of gammas is not necessarily related to the activity of the source, it's related to the activity and the type of source, because 37,000 keys per second of, of europium-152 emits uh, results in the emission of many more gamma rays than 37,000 decays per second of cesium-137. 37, 37,000 decays per second of strontium-90, which turns into zircon-90, and then, um, sorry, strontium-90 turns into yttrium-90 turns into zircon-90. That whole decay chain produces nearly zero gammas. There's a little bit, very, very low probability from yttrium-90, but almost none. Yet it's the same 37,000, the same microcurry of strontium-90. Does that make sense? So hopefully that makes more sense. If it doesn't, let me know, because sometimes I rattle on. So uh, without uh, uh, any further ado, you asked to, to see what the actual dose rates would be. So here you go, one microcurry. That was done October 2011, so it's not quite a microcurry anymore. It's like 0.957 or something. I'd have to do the math. It's e, um, e to the uh, negative lambda with uh, t. So let's take this. Open it up. This is a sealed source where everybody starts screaming at me, oh my god, you've contaminated your detector. No, I haven't. This is a completely sealed source. Oh my god, look at it. It's sealed. Put it up against, and what do we get? Whoa. What does that sound like? All right, so 90.48 thousand. 90,000 counts per minute. 
Well, it's right in the dot. 92,000 counts per minute. You see for yourself, this is times 1,000, okay? So about 90 is what we're getting off of this. And if we use the dose rate mode, and this would actually be accurate since it's season 137, we'd want to put something over here to shield the betas, of course. And to give you an idea, I might as well do it. Using the plastic in the back of here, we'll put it back in its little container. And using the plastic and everything like that to shield, what kind of gamma are we getting off of it? Gamma efficiency is quite low. Now, I'm not being too scientific because you notice that I'm just using the plastic to shield the betas and some could be getting through. We probably want to actually sit down and calculate the absorber materials to be absolutely sure of what we're testing. But you see what I mean. We're looking at 800-ish, under 1,000 counts per minute. Maybe a little more. Give it another second. Okay, so under 1,000, about 900 and some is what we're getting. Taking a different detector, let's take this guy and test its gamma. The actual detector is right here, so we'll put it into the sidewall right here. What are we getting? Gamma only. No beta. Well, less scary, huh? We could be here for a while. Oh, come on now. This is why I like the Polymaster. It's like instantaneously right where it needs to be. Ugh. Get the Polymaster, put it right here. And it's instantaneously where it needs to be. It doesn't take like time. It's just right there. All right, so gamma-wise, we're actually getting similar readings. Look at this. We're getting a third of the reading we got off the pancake. The reason is that this has a much higher efficiency for gamma, even though it's such a tiny tube by comparison. Does that make sense? This thing's efficiency is much higher, so even though the tube is smaller, it gets proportionally a, a, a pretty good size reading. I mean, we're half the reading we got off the pancake, whereas the pancake is like, you know, zillions of times bigger than this little itty-bitty tube. Now let's pull this um, source out. And let's test it right up here against against the top. Pull this out. All right, so pull this little protective case off. Beta and gamma, maximum. Short, it's almost 15 minutes. Oh my god. All right, so much for my short video. So a third. So when dealing with sources, that are reasonably potent, this device, the little CRM100, is getting about a third of the um, reading. And now, last but not least, um, to give you an idea of what I mean by being all over the place, we'll try it up against a Ludlum. Um, this Ludlum is set to, this is a Model 12, set to times 1000 mode. So these uh, things right here read 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 hundred thousand. This is a 1 inch sodium iodide detector. Um, as you can see, we're getting a background of about uh, two to three thousand. God, two to three thousand counts per minute. Maybe two, three thousand. Yeah. How many times am I going to say that? All right. So here's the cesium-137. We put it up against the actual detector. One hundred thousand. What is that? One hundred and almost one hundred and fifty, hundred sixty thousand counts per minute. Not bad. And that is gamma only. Back down to background. Oops. All right, so hopefully that answers your questions. Um, like I said, there'll be some more videos showing the neutron detector and talking about neutrons because neutrons are awesome. But this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. This is a really, really quick little video. I just threw it together to answer some questions. And bye-bye. Um,